name's Bonnie Estridge. I um, have a daughter called Susie with diabetes. She's 23. I'd say to any parent that finds out their child's diabetic, I'd say don't panic because it's not something that you welcome in your life at all. But it's something that can be controlled. It's not like it's not like a um, some horrible terminal disease that there's no cure for. There isn't a cure for diabetes, but it can be controlled. But it's up to them at the end of the day. They've got to be the ones that control it. And as a mother, it's okay while they're small children and you can make them do what you want them to do. But it's really when they get out of your control, uh, that's when they can go off the rails. I've written three books on diabetes since Susie was diagnosed. One about children called So Your Child Has Diabetes, which was supposed to be very kind of so, your child has diabetes. Um, to make it sound as it wasn't the end of the world. And then we did a pregnancy one, and then we did a teenagers and diabetes, which was very interesting, the most interesting one, because it covered all drink, drugs, rock festivals, all that type of thing, how they could cope with it. I first discovered that Susie had diabetes just before she was seven, just after Christmas, when she suddenly started drinking a lot more than she normally did and drinking things that she normally wouldn't have drunk, such as milk, um, and going to the loo a lot. Uh, at first, I didn't really think anything of it, but it just got to the stage where she was losing weight and she, had, she complained that her vision was blurred and she was quite lethargic as well. She was sort of quite listless, so I, I took her to the GP. And he did a urine test and said, yes, it's, her blood sugar levels are high, which means that it is diabetes. Uh, but you need to go and see a consultant, um, you know, a specialist. I felt very shocked when we heard, because there was nobody in the family as far as we knew that had it, and I had a misconception of diabetes, I have to say, that she would never be able to eat sweet things again. But as it turned out, it was it, things are very different to how we perceived them to be at the time then. The diet had totally changed and the thinking about diabetes had totally changed. She had to learn to give herself injections. So um, I was taught how to give the injection as well. And we started off doing that, but she was given um, a teddy bear to practice on and she'd practice on the teddy bear and I'd give her the injections to start with. And then suddenly she just said, I think I want to do it myself. And she did from then onwards. She also had to do blood tests to make sure that the level of sugar or glucose in her blood was neither too high nor too low. So we had to get used to sorting ourselves out and being disciplined and being have a routine and she had to have a routine. Susie found it difficult to really not so much cope with it but come to terms with her having diabetes in, in adolescence, mainly when she was a teenager and went to her college, sixth form college. Um, just because she didn't want to be seen as different from anybody else. She didn't want to have to eat at set time. She didn't want to inject herself uh, when she wanted to do something else. And the whole thing, I think, got on top of her because it seemed too complicated and actually just a, a pain in the neck. I think that, that people should know that it's not a sort of dreadful stigma, it shouldn't be a stigma, and there are loads of people walking around with diabetes that you would have absolutely no idea, in the same way as a lot of people have no idea that Susie has it. She lives a totally independent life, and I don't think you should wrap your children in cotton wool. I think you should explain to them that it's up to them. For more information, visit www.nhs.uk.